I'm always ready. Well, that's cause great because we're recording. Welcome to Words from My Face. I uh, know it's still a show. It's not dead quite yet, even though it has been like two feet in the grave for the past couple months. But on tonight's show, we're talking about Robin Hood, the 2018 movie coming out. Then we're talking about Netflix's reboot of the reboot series. And does it live up to our childhood memories? Then we're finally saying everything with a little bit of the inductees to the Video Game Hall of Fame. Yes, there is such a thing which I did not know before the tonight's show. But stay tuned. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to my face. My name is Brian. With me is always producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. <laughs> little, little bit of a stutter there, but, you know. That's how yeah, it's been going. <laughs> the, the chainsaw was a, little, was a little rusty. We haven't used it in a while, you know, because things, you know, things. Yes. I'm trying to figure out an excuse as to why we haven't done the show in a long time. Because things. Well, one of them is possibly because uh, of our technical difficulties resulting in tonight's show with brought to you by Blobby Volley. Two. A Blobby Volley. Brought the to you blobbiest by... of all Blobby Volleys. That is vol- to Volley by... the Blobbies. I mean... Where we're playing it, we have it going. Well, they have not time. sponsored us at all whatsoever. Yeah, I don't think they even have money to sponsor us, to be honest. They there. probably have no clue who we are anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's an open source game. Yeah, so, so, hey, it's cool. It's all good. It's all good. They probably don't even remember making this game. Uh, and there's, well, last I checked, people were still doing like tournaments of this game. So, really? All right. Yeah. Blobby but volley it up, bro. It actually, Blobby has been volley since I checked. But yeah, because Blobby Volley. You know, I, and I realize we're we're about four years old as a show, Brendan. Almost exactly. I want to say we did our first show. Oh, we did that in August. So the, no, the the end. That was our like this is our first YouTube show was in April. Oh, okay, that might be true. So we were yeah, doing all this Blobby I, Volley. The back first then, time so. we did Blobby Volley, like that. That's why we're bringing it back. Not te- technical difficult. Not because of technical difficulties, but because of nostalgia. Yeah. That is why Blobby Volley has come back. Yeah. Before we showed our faces. We showed Blobby Volley. Yeah, and lots of and lots of people wanted those Blobby Volleys back. Yeah, maybe. So, no, I don't <laughs> all know. the the two people that saw it, <laughs> the, t- the the two, two people, people that used to watch back then, clamoring to get it back. And when I say two people, I mean me and Bridget. <laughs> those yes. are the two that have been clamoring for it back. But it is Thursday night. I guess it doesn't matter since we don't do this show even like semi regularly anymore. It is entertainment. We're going to do some entertainment. So let's entertain some people, Brendan. And let's kick it off with, um, to my dismay, I'm actually kind of kicking it off with this. Today, just sitting around watching a little YouTube and saw one of the trailers that plays at the front of a lot of YouTube videos, like all the time, always. And it was, it was a trailer for Robin Hood. 2018. Uh, now, I don't think the movie's called Robin Hood 2018. I think it's just called Robin Hood. Yeah, so, 2018 just to distinguish it from the 10,000 other, other ones. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm calling it Robin Hood 2018. But so we had Robin Hood 2018 pop up on my screen. And you know what's funny about this? And I think I mentioned this before. But they had a teaser trailer to the teaser trailer. Like they had a little like five seconds saying, oh, you're about to watch the brand new trailer. Like, And it was like a trailer in itself of the trailer. And I'm like, so how many trailers are enough? See, people have gone a little off the wall with that. And honestly, the first one I remember going off the wall with it is um, Bethesda with uh, one of the, I think the Fallout 4. They did the the announcement site trailer thing countdown for when they were going to show an announcement about the game that was going to announce... The trailer that was going to come out later, the demo later, it was like insanity. Yeah, yeah. So and just uh, just let us know when stuff is coming out. But to talk about Robin Hood 2018 show, I was like, okay, I am a fan of Robin Hood. The story is cool. I've liked a lot of the previous movies. Uh, I love the cartoon one back in the day. So I was like, you know, let me let me. I guess I'll, I'll watch this trailer, see what it's all about. And to be honest with you, watching it wasn't horrible. I mean, you watched it too, right, Brennan? Yes, I did. I did that. Brian. So. 
we're not going to break it down like part for part for part, but just the overall feel, it kind of felt like it was trying to be like a super like action hero movie with like I, guns and stuff without guns. And it was just, I mean, cause Robin I Hood, I was, guess is an action hero. That was exactly what I was thinking. I was like, they're trying to follow the, the action superhero movies, which makes sense right now because that's the big thing. Yeah. Um, they kind of felt I, I like they're trying to make him Batman. To be honest. Yeah, which was a little bit too far. And even in, in one of the parts, they, I was reading a synopsis. They're like, before, you know, there was Oliver Queen or Hawkeye. There was Robin. I was like, what? Come on. Like, come, a yeah. little too much. But, like, there's one part in particular in the very beginning of the trailer, right after the teaser part, where you see Robin Hood kind of jump down. And he's fighting some guards in the rain. And he, like, grabs one of the guards' crossbows and, like, dismantles it. Like you see in those action movies when somebody dismantles a gun or something. I'm yeah. like, really? I'm like, come on, people. Like, you can come up with new moves. Like, seriously. And he's jumping around and shooting his arrows like he, You're like they were guns. in a medieval setting. You're fine. You don't need the other stuff. Like, you already have yeah. a bunch of... You have swords. And yeah, that's cool, too. Throwing knives or something. Like, you know, do some of that stuff. I, I, they fought you know. with sticks. Fight, whatever. You just... You, you, yeah. There's plenty of stuff you can already do with Robin Hood. And it's it's crazy. So so they they're going for an action vibe, and whereas that's not the worst thing. I well, think they're going for the over the top, fast and furious, you know, yeah. type action. So you know, so I'm not so sure that that'll pan out. But who knows? You know, we we gotta wait. And see. We were complaining about it just now, but but honestly, when I saw this, I was also thinking, okay, they're also clearly not trying to go for a super historical take or, or whatever. In which case. You know what? That that's fine. We're gonna have an yeah, have fun with movie, have fun with it, yeah. and yeah, they're they're going with it so far that they're like, yeah, clearly this is not how medieval weapons worked, but for a lot of them anyway, we'll do things that look more like guns and and I don't know Gatling guns and things like that. But you know, fine, whatever. Mm-hmm. You're going for an action movie using Robin Hood, and I think they did have whatever. like a Gatling crossbow at the that's end that's what too. i like, saw like that flash for a second was like, it was like okay. there was like 18 arrows in a crossbow i'm like come all right all right fine i mean yeah that's uh, that's Which, i guess that's again, acceptable but if we're just on, if guys. we're all clear on this this is not supposed to be a realistic movie and it's robin hood so you don't have to be like all mm-hmm. right you know what it, 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 do what you do do what you do it's fine <laughs> there now, have the been cast... realistic takes before there have been f- fantastical takes before fine just, yeah it actually both. looked pretty good to me even with uh as long as i'm like hey you know what i don't care if this is at all time representative because there's plenty of good movies that are not that just use medieval ish um i don't know costuming <laughs> to, mm-hmm. to do whatever they want <laughs> yeah so but now the cast did seem kind of interesting you do have jamie fox in there he's being that cast was my as biggest John. that was my um, biggest surprise just because it's jamie fox I was like, yeah, now he's he doing be serious little movies John. now because he's doing. He looks like he was trying to do the, the most serious character. Uh, well, he's supposed before. to be training Robin Hood, as I see it, yeah, and so he's, he's probably like, some like guru, like fighting guru, and that's how Robin Hood can now do backflips and shoot arrows at the same time. Yeah. Uh, then you had Taron Edgerton. Now most people, he's a little or known actor, but he's on the rise. I mean, this is the guy who was uh, the star of Kingsman, which was actually a spectacular movie, I thought. Mm-hmm. And, and kind of seeing Robin, the, the trailer was like, okay, they're trying to make a Kingsman Robin Hood so that this guy fits. So uh, yeah, you never know. And then you had Ben Mendelsohn in there. He's always a good actor. He plays the sheriff of Nottingham. Now, one thing I didn't see, uh, I didn't see any of Prince John. They didn't didn't make a Um, mention of him. I didn't see that either, but they may not do a whole lot with Prince John. Not all. Maybe they want to do another one, a sequel. Well, not all the Robin Hood stories even talk about Prince John very much. Like we think of Prince John as being the the big villain, but he's, he's not really in all the versions of Robin hood. Uh, some of the older yeah. stories of Robin hood, he's like not mentioned at all. Um, hmm. the but honestly, like, like tell me this movie did not remind you of the King Arthur re- or, you know, series that came out last year. Like that's all I could kept, kept thinking in my head was like, this feels like uh, King Arthur. It didn't so much because this was actually a good trailer. The trailer opposed, for King Arthur was just oh no that was pretty no garbage, remember wasn't we, it? Yeah, we, I hated we it anyway. that trailer they had yeah, bad, bad trailer even with uh, cutting up a trailer they somehow left in poorly delivered uh, lines and yeah, things like that it's true. like you couldn't 
from this entire movie, you couldn't pick better <laughs> delivery than and which, this? Which I did go to see that King Arthur movie. And I'll tell you this. I took a girl to go see that, and then she never talked to me again. So I feel like that movie was so bad. Yeah. It ruined my chances yeah. with this girl. So One thing there I thought go. was, like, clearly they're trying to capitalize on story and other things, but they're doing, like we said, some weird semi-futuristic stuff. Like, the even the architecture looked... I don't know, like something out of Dune. Almost like they're doing like or a steampunkish type, uh, steampunk type, uh, you know, medieval yeah. thing. It's, it still looks medieval to a large extent, but mm -hmm. clearly not like a rough medieval. This is there's something going on here. Like this is a, a high fantasy uh, world or court. Something that was interesting when they show the castle, especially it looked like there was uh, some some rooms that were just clearly very smoothed out, giant uh, rooms that don't look like you would usually expect in a medieval setting. Um, like I said, it kind of reminded me of like a Dune setting, where again they're they're still fighting with swords and things, but it's the distant future, things like that, um, which could be cool. Uh, depends on what the, what they end up doing with it. It's only a trailer, so I guess we don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's that's to be fair. It's just a trailer. I, I kind of felt like it was a little over the top, and we didn't really need another Robin Hood movie. But yeah, you know, there I'm are some signs that it might be cool. I'm fine with more Robin Hood, to be honest, because we haven't had a good Robin Hood movie in a while, um, and I just really like Robin Hood. Um, the del like I said, I like this trailer better than that King Arthur one. Um, Everyone delivered their lines and the action in the trailer, at least, very well. So that's a better sign than it was for, you know, it's still a trailer, so anything can happen. Um, but I enjoyed, you know, the roles were believable enough for the for how it was delivered. Um, I did get, like, the only thing that kind of weirds me out is they really are trying to make him a superhero and a Batman because they're they're acting like it's a secret who he is. He's yeah, but then they, they they're like it's a secret who he is, and then they automatically show you who he is in the trailer. Well, no, but what I'm saying like he, it's a secret from everyone else, as opposed to in the usual uh, Robin Hood setup, everyone knows who he is. They they know yeah. everything about him. It's like this is Robin of Loxley, uh, who's been cast out or whatever the case may be, or he was a rogue forever or whatever the particular story may be, but they know who he is. He's not hiding behind a mask. Um, the only, there's only a few people or a few instances where he hides behind a mask for a little bit because they know who he is um, all the time. So, but they're, like yeah. I said, they're making him out to possibly be a Batman. Cause I'm sure if he's hiding who he is, the way he is in that, he's probably still the, the rich uh, in his noble um, position. So he's like the rich guy of the area of, uh, fighting for good. So that's what I'm going to guess. And Maid Marion doesn't seem to like him very much. Yeah, the dynamic there, though, um, actually the actress who played her, too, um, reminded me a lot of the BBC Robin Hood from, from, from I guess, 10 years ago now. Um, I don't know if you ever saw that series. Yeah, but there was a, it. It was actually, yeah. I really liked it. It fell off the rails. I know it you did. liked it, but it fell off the rails. It was really good the first season or two. And then the third season, it dived down, then looked like it was bringing itself back up, and then threw itself into the ground to the point that I honestly watched the whole series up to the last episode and didn't even bother watching the last episode. Mm. <laughs> but... Still, that it has mm. a lot of that feel. The, the actress looks the same. Some of the action reminded me of that, and I thought the the mass person was going to be the, like the Night Watchman, like they do in in that show. Um, Game of Thrones. No, in in the old uh, Robin Hood, they had the Night oh, Watchman. The Robin, so. um, well, I mean, a lot of it's up in the air, so I guess time will tell. So I guess we'll have to see the movie, or at least another trailer or two. Sounds like me and you are a little bit split. You liked it more than I did. Yeah, I'm a little, but, but I might just like Robin Hood more, and I think you do. I think you do. Be a little bit more excited for it. So, but we'll yeah. see. But time will tell. So hit us up. Let us know what you think. Are you excited to see this new Robin Hood movie, or uh, do you think they should have left it where it was and uh, 
you know, hadn't the other 1500 properties made after it <laughs> but it is up let us know comments down below of course at where's my face on twitter google plus and facebook oh it's good ways getting a hold of us but let's keep on a rolling and let's talk a little tv tv and so netflix has done it they've tried to reboot get it get, hold on oh i guess i got to finish the sentence before you figure that reboot my childhood by rebooting the reboot television series i probably shouldn't have said hey look what i did there in the middle of me saying the sentence probably ruined yeah, the joke you need a to reboot bit. that uh delivery Brian. reboot that delivery <laughs> oh oh <laughs> that was so oh. good wasn't it so many so many funny things are coming out of this one but yeah so if you don't remember reboot the television series was a, a one of the first digitally animated television shows that came out in the mid 90s if i'm correct it's one of the first um and it was a show me and Brendan used to. That, that was like one of the shows we could always agree on watching. I loved, think that loved, was loved the first show. um big CGI one, full CGI television show. I think that was one of its claims to fame, anyway. So, and it was it was awesome, and it was about these little sprites that live in your computer, and whenever you play a game, they have to fight for their lives. So it was kind of a dark premise if you really <laughs> got in depth with it. But it oh, was and it gets a... it's particularly dark in the the later seasons when um they they grow up and have gone through some pretty terrible stuff yeah. yeah so but it was an interesting it was an interesting premise and it was a show again that me and brendan absolutely adored well netflix is remaking this show into a quasi live action quasi uh cgi animated show so i was like hmm i have this plane flight in front of me i uh, took a trip and i was like hmm i could use some things and netflix lets you download things so i said hey why don't i watch like a uh, half a dozen episodes of reboot well, I got through three. See, let me tell you something. When you, when Brian sent me this this message, I was like, "Wait, reboot from our childhood? You're not talking about the Netflix reboot show that I saw on there because I didn't watch it. Mm. I saw it and I said, "Hey, look, there's reboots. I wonder if they finally brought back reboots because I hoped it was the one from my childhood." And then I saw the description of it. And I was like, "Nah, this is just something else." that mm -hmm. they took the name for and i didn't bother watching because i said you know i'm going to be just too disappointed in this no matter how good it is simply because this is not going to be the reboot that i i want to see because i'm one of the people that has been long awaiting the reboot movie that was promised like 12 years ago yeah keep waiting for that yeah they had a, tra a, a teaser trailer for it even and uh, cast and like screenshots of stuff over the years and it's looked like it was just never going to happen and so at some point I was like hey maybe Netflix picked it up no this isn't it no so, so the premise of this show is you have four kids uh, and these are the live action so these are the real kids um, are attending a junior high that's supposed to be super advanced technologically you know like a magnet school you know really good school for technologically advanced kids uh, but why? and and they all get a message on their smartphones calling them into the secret room in the school because they need to boot themselves into um, the net per so se <laughs> it's pretty VR much the net. this is what i'm hearing vr troop kind of and um the reason they were picked is because they're all the best they're the best clan in this game called guardians which is they're they're pretty much trying to connect to the old show they're trying to say bob was a guardian from outside and he would come back in every now and then it's kind of what they were trying to do do there uh, because there's a new hacker and he's uh, creating like he in the first episode he shuts down like all the power to Europe. <laughs> it's funny because okay. the kids are in America and everybody's like acting like it's nothing. But like you know, if you shut down the power to Europe for even 20 minutes, like that would be crazy. Like that there would be pandemonium. Yes, um, for, for all of Europe for 700 million people. Yeah, that'd be a big mm -hmm. deal. Yeah, so they uh, they they. They call the kids in and they um, boot them into this VR thing and they uh, work together like they did in the mobile game to be the best team and and end up uh, you know being the new guardians of everything. Because now they do they break don't have back some of the professionals yeah, for have. this kind of thing. No, that they were. That's why they were training kids to do it. That's <laughs> they were training kids to do it. Um, now you do in one of the episodes you do have Megabyte come back and he's kind of being used as a pawn by these super evil hacker genius guy that. You know, it, it you know, it, it's reboot, but it's not reboot. Now, it sounds part of like me, nothing like reboot. In fact, 
Yeah, it uses some of the same characters, uses some of the same concepts, but it, it's a different style. Now, part of me thinks, actually, if you put me back to being like 12 to 14 years old or maybe a little younger, I would love this show because I didn't hate it, but it's a kid's show. Yeah. And so when you're, I'm sure you're watching a kid it. show, if you haven't, if you didn't originally watch the show when you're a kid, it's it just doesn't work. Uh, it, it doesn't work. Honestly, I'm sure we would love it because this sounds like VR Troopers, which I did love. Mm -hmm. um, but... That was VR. Why are they calling it Reboot? Why not just call it VR Troopers? I guess Reboot has more attached to it, or they've been trying to do something with that for longer. Yeah, they use, like I said, they use Megabyte, and they use some of the same I know, but you could easily terms. just switch that out for anyone else. Because this really sounds exactly like VR Troopers, other than they didn't like select the kids in particular, but that there was some special hacker in VR troopers. If, if you remember true, that they, right, yeah. they had to take out and, you know, the kids go into a VR world to, to battle him so that he's not destroying stuff. And th this could be VR troopers. Like, why is this not VR troopers? Why did you pick reboot? Cause that's what they wanted. Cause reboot <laughs> was all about characters. And like, you never see the in the game, or, in the game, the sprites themselves in the yeah, game. Yeah. And their daily lives and everything. It wasn't just the action. And they there was so, no hackers involved other than there was viruses, but it was all. So if you're an old products. old person like me and Brendan are, and you remember the old reboot show, and you think, hey, maybe this will bring back some nostalgia, no, it won't. So my recommendation is, unless you got kids, don't watch it. <laughs> unless you are a kid, don't watch it. Otherwise, it might be you know it'd be pretty cool if we were younger generation. But I don't know. Hit me up. Let me know what you think. Did you watch the original reboot television series from the '90s and? How do you compare it to this no, one? Brian, Hit us up, let us know. One question. Did you look up and find out, did Netflix acquire the rights to the original reboot? And are we going to see that on Netflix? Or is it already on Netflix? Uh, it used to be on Netflix a while back. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a while, though. So I, if they have that, why don't we just go back and watch the original reboot? Because I want new right stuff. I, I already watched all that. Yeah, but this doesn't sound as good, so... It's not as good. It's not as good. <laughs> but uh, so if you've watched the original and you've watched this one, hit us up. Let us know what you think. And if you haven't, will you? And, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Comments down below, of course, always at Words from My Face on Twitter, Google Plus, and Facebook. Always good ways getting a hold of us. And I forgot my little outros to every segment, it seems like. It's been a couple of months since we've done this. But let's keep on a rolling. And we're going to skip headlines tonight because we just dealt with you. Them. We dealt with an hour and a half of technical Brian, difficulties. How dare you? So we're going to jump into Brian, video games. How dare you? I'm just going to ignore Brendan. Video games. But I have headlines up and everything. <laughs> that sucks, man. You, you pulled up one page. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Why? It's, a, it's all right, because I think half the stuff is actually things we're going to be talking about anyway. So, Well, so. there you go. So something happened today that I, I never realized. While I was researching topics for the show, I come across a little article that says that Final Fantasy VII and Tomb Raider are inducted into the Video Game Hall of Fame this year. So they'll be the 2008 inductees, as, long, as well as some other ones. Did I say 2008? I meant 2018. And I thought to myself, hmm, I've never heard of a Video Game Hall of Fame. So Which is funny because I, figured... I thought we had talked about this, you know, in years past. I mean, we've but talked about a lot of video games. Apparently, yeah. I just, you know, was aware yeah. of this and listened to other podcasts talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan was hoping we were other podcasts thinking about it. But, uh, you know, a couple things came to mind. I, I was like, I'm curious to see which games are actually in the Video Game Hall of Fame. But before I look... Let's just wait until we get on air so I can react to each game that is in the Hall of Fame. Hopefully it's not like a list of hundreds because um, that would be a really long show. But let's just see what's... It's only been going on since 2015. Mm -hmm. So let's let's run down the list. It's not see a if there's any that we See if there's any that we don't think should be there and a couple say a couple that we think should be there. So let's start off with... Uh, of course, this is probably... I don't think this is in chronological order. I think it's in alphabetical order. But we have Donkey Kong, the original is in the, the Hall of Fame, which mm -hmm. deservedly so, definitely should be. Yeah. Uh, then you have Doom, the pioneer for first-person shooter mm -hmm. games. We would not have the first-person shooter genre like we have you know, it today without I, Doom. Yeah, everyone talks about Doom, and I guess Doom deserves the place more, but I always think with that um, type of game, more of Wolfenstein 3D. Wolfenstein might have been one of the first, but Doom was actually really good. Wolfenstein yeah. wasn't good. <laughs> like was, was good. It was all right. Just, for, like, for its time, it was good, and then Doom yeah. just set things 
off. Yeah, Doom, Doom was just series. way better. I mean, like I said, it, we wouldn't have the genre we have today without Doom. Mm. And it's just it's done really well. So then we have uh, Final Fantasy VII, which just I, got in. It's yeah. the only Final Fantasy I see on the list, and I'm kind of disappointed. And that's the one that just got in this year. So deservedly so. It belongs there. But I'm yeah, sure there's a couple of the Final Fantasy. Trying to keep to one game a series. Yeah, for for a little bit anyway. So they yeah, took they the are still pretty one, now. the most iconic. Yeah. I guess you know. I think that other games did outsell Final Fantasy VII at some point. Oh, I'm, I'm, I know ten did. Uh, Thirteen definitely did. But, Fifteen but, probably. Yeah. Game sales are a lot different now than yeah. when seven came there out. There are more so. people playing games now, so more people yeah. have co- game yeah. consoles and things like that. So. Uh, yep. Exactly. And then we have Grand Theft Auto 3. Uh, that one definitely deserves to be on. That is the grandfather of all sandbox games right there. Uh, and not surprisingly, we have Halo Combat Evolved. That one definitely. See, that one really list. set off the new rounds of first person. Or people would say 007, but the controls really weren't there for what it is yeah now. no it was it was it was halo with the the modern shooters yeah doom might have inspired FPSs. some of the bases of of these first person shooters but halo is what evolved it to what it is combat evolved is a very very apt yeah. name for this um then we have john madden football it must be an old one must be like the 1990 or 1980 i think they just picked the first like one they picked the first one because yeah. that just started the series. Yeah, which is, not you know, so by far not the best game of it, the series, but yeah, the mo- like the one that started it all. So that's pretty cool. Then you have the Legend of Zelda. Looks like the original one. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if in a couple like when when we look at this list, if this ever becomes like a gold gold standard, you know, this Hall of Fame. If in like a hundred years, we'll see all the Zelda games on there. Um, I doubt we would see Zelda two. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Zelda 2, no. Um, but I could definitely see um, but some of the, the big Super ones Nintendo, like you know. Um, Link to the Past, yeah. Link to the Past, both the 64s, and Wind Waker. And not Wind Waker, the new one, Breath of the Wild. Yeah, that would make sense. Twilight Princess, maybe. Some of them seem like they're remakes of the others, but yeah. they're still good, and they did different stuff. That is a series that has done very well for itself. Um hasn't put out too many versions too frequently right but has but when they do they they kill it ones. yeah usually yeah and then probably the i would say in my mind the most iconic game on this list the oregon trail i believe everybody's played this game yeah not only that i actually picked up a copy of it recently so i can have well, some of my kids play so. so there you go. So a game that just keeps on going. Um, then we have Pac-Man on there, which is that's interesting. That's probably the most iconic, I would say. Actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that's probably the most. Yeah, everybody's played Pac-Man over Ogre and Trail. That's true. Um, then we have Pokemon Red and Green, which is interesting that they don't have Red and Blue. I believe this is the Japanese version is Red and Green, and then the Americans got Red and Blue. We did have Red and Blue, and later we got Green, which was um, both which had both mm-hmm. sets of, or all the Pokemon, I think. Oh, um, okay. But yeah, maybe in Japan it was red and green because, mm-hmm. and that makes sense because those are. Uh, well, because they're just showing the, the cover art to these and it looks like colors. Japanese letters on there. So. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if that that's the case that in Japan they had red and green. And then that brings us to maybe the oldest game on the list. Pong. It's gotta be up there. Uh, yeah, then, that's a very uh, that's the oldest one I can think of, of that we said so far. That's not a, if they have something like computer space on there, then that would be even older. But let's keep older. going through the list. Then uh, next up, we have The Sims. That was a, a big game that you know started a lot of the oh, you can choose how people your decisions affect what's going on in the game. You know, type They're thing. Still milking that game with. Sims of course. for having a million different. That's more of infamous now because they have a million different packs that they're trying to milk with everything. But mm. the Sims is uh has, was a big hit series. Yeah, make their money some way or another. Then we have uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, this list would be nothing without Sonic on there. One of the most legendary platforms. And I'm sure we're coming up to Super Mario because we just started the S's. Mm-hmm. But then we have Space Invaders, another really big, iconic game. A game I've never heard of. Space War. I don't know much about Space War. Doesn't I know that they like have it. a lot of international games in this list, though. So they include games that 
weren't necessarily big in the U.S., which is, is this a was a game that came out in the 1960s. So that must have been one of the. Oh man, those style of games were might even predate uh, computer space. I wonder if that's even one of the um, real video ones. Mm. Maybe yeah, it was. It was. It was an. I mean, it's a can't really see much from it, but looks interesting. Um, then we have Street Fighter Two, of course. That is the most legendary fighting game of all time. I'd that say that things off for fight. Like there were fighting games before it. Clearly, Street Fighter One. Yeah, Street Fighter, Fighter Street. pushed um, it forward. But Street Fighter Two, Street Fighter Two is the one on there, right? Yeah, that's the that, that's the one on there. That's the best one. That well, that's not that's necessarily the said, best one. That's the most iconic one. That's the revolutionary it is, one. It is actually very good. Like you could argue that it is the best one because there's people still play that specific one in tournaments a lot. Mm. Um, it is a big deal. They keep re-releasing it because everyone wants to play it it was very well done and it did set the tone for pretty much all fighting games at least 2d fighting games um which yeah. were the only ones at the time that i know of so <laughs> there you go yeah exactly uh then we have super mario brothers uh no explanation needed there i don't know brian why would they have uh, super mario I mean, brothers no one plays uh, that game it could have just launched um, what we know today as the modern gaming consoles. Well, it didn't. It was, you know, Nintendo, everything else was still already around, but it definitely pushed things forward and became the most iconic icon. Well, there was the bust of the Atari that everybody thought consoles yeah. were done, no, and then not. Nintendo came out. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, you know, Super, the original Nintendo did not come out with Super Mario Brothers. That was a few years until Super Mario Brothers came out. But But it revived industry I'm it was it was one of the first revived. must buy games out there yeah. i mean they had already de- revived the industry a little bit but yes it then pushed things even further because everyone wanted to play super mario brothers it's a good yeah. game <laughs> so. for sure and then what sold their smaller system tetris is the next one on the list uh yeah. that was big game big for then we have games. tomb raider which was inducted this year and the final game in the games hall of fame would be world of warcraft that yeah and that makes sense that still is the definitive uh mmorpg, MMORPG. so and had yeah. millions and millions of people playing still has millions and millions of people playing yeah you know what is it blizzard could probably just thrive as one of the biggest companies on just that game even though they had plenty great games beforehand oh, now they have overwatch and yeah, they have all those so now that list i actually going through it i there's nothing on there except for space war which i just didn't know but it sounds like if that was from the 60s I probably there were iconic. some more games on there because i thought there was some no, that's, uh, racing that's, games on that at some point no, that that is the list as i see it right there is that this year's list no that's oh. that's every inductee since 2015 all right so all right, so any game on there that you really think doesn't belong, I, I actually think it's a pretty good list. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was I'm kind of surprised. I kind of wish there was some some game on there that I, I mean, really wouldn't want on there. They've done a really good job. They're careful. They don't put too many at a time. They really do pick things well. You know, there'll be games that not necessarily is your favorite game, but you can understand why they yeah. put that genre defining games there. What they might not be the best in the genre necessarily, but they defined, they helped define said genre. Uh, like Doom, I don't really like Doom, and I remember when it came out, I wasn't really a big fan of that game, but I see what it did for all first person shooters, and I love that. Halo, uh, actually, never mind, I loved Honestly, Halo and everything. The one that I wonder a little bit about, but it's just the closest to wondering, even though I still think it deserves the place, is Tomb Raider. But Tomb Raider is just so iconic. Like, it makes sense to, at some point, have that. You know, mm-hmm. I might say, wait until certain other ones get in there before putting Tomb Raider in. But I might say that for some of the others, too. Like, Grand Theft Auto 3 is, is a big deal, but I might wait for another year and um, maybe get... Now, now the, that was done. That was done. You know, these aren't from this year. All these are just from since 2015. Yeah, I, I understand. I'm saying though, there might be some other games that we can think of that are not on the list at all that I would say put in first before some mm-hmm. of those. That's but true. But 
those are definitely ones that should be in at some you can't say that these those should not be in a hall of fame oh yeah so everything deserves on there so okay so i can think of one game right off the top of my head immediately that kind of makes me feel like the, the hall of fame is not legit for not having it in there um and really any list of best one game in the world ever made this game should always be on there so I mean, like, I do think this list is good, but there, there's one blatant omission. Uh, Metroid. That 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 should be on there. But that actually, that's been put in one of the nom nominees. I think that was a nominee this year. I read yeah. the list of nominees. It just didn't make it in. No, Battlefront Two, man. Battlefront Two. Battlefront Two. Um, How's Battlefront Two not on there? Actually, that would make a lot of sense, um, particularly because it was what. When it came it out, started the MOBA genre. People don't realize that that was the first MOBA. No, was it? Massive. It's it wasn't online necess. It was online actually. I take it back. Yeah, it is a MOBA. You get checkpoints. You funnel it wasn't people through. For um, uh, Warcraft three though, which had the the Dota maps that started it. You sure? Well, okay, well, fine. In, in Warcraft three is where it started. It's the best MOBA game ever made. I, I, it's kind of weird to even call it a MOBA. It's not really I know it's because it's not massive. It, well, it was actually online. Remember, we used to play yeah, that on the PlayStation saying, Two like, online. It's a completely different style than any. But it's kind of like the the blueprint to a MOBA. Well, one way or the other, it's a great game, <laughs> and it was it the be best the selling um, Star Wars game ever at the time. There's so many Star Wars games. Yeah, there's. I don't know if anything surpassed it since. Maybe Which nothing should. Um, Hopefully that new Battlefront garbage didn't. I'm talking about the older Battlefront the from PS2. The new ones did outsell it. It's just because there's more people to buy and they people have been wanting. It's just you know going on the uh, the tales of Battlefront 2 being so awesome. Yeah, the old Battlefront much. 2, not the new Battlefront oh, 2. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But all right, Brendan, what's what's one omission that you believe should be on this list? Uh well, I I said Metroid, but um I can understand. Oh, well, Metroid yeah, no Metroid. If you want to stick Super with Metroid, Metroid I totally Super Metroid. I would, yeah. Oh yeah, I I don't blame you. That that I mean the way, what do they call that genre of game? It's not a platformer. It's a shooter, but like explore. Yeah, but Metroid was different. Shooter. Metroidvania. Okay, there you go. There's two right there. Metroid and Castlevania because they are the ones in the name Metroidvania. That's a style of game. There's oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Many yeah, games. Well, that's true. The whole style is named after them. There's there's rogue like games and there's Metroidvania games, and I can't think yeah. of many others. Well, like I remember playing a game for Xbox, Shadow Complex. It was really really good, but it was a Metroidvania game. Um. So yeah, there you go. I mean, I also thought of Chrono Trigger, but I can understand why that's not quite on the list yet. But yeah, seriously, they like. More it didn't define a genre it was just awesome it was just one of the best of the genre yeah <laughs> yeah I, I mean i get what they're going for like uh, and again this is only what two, this is only the fourth year of of inductees and unless they're going to induct 100 people for the first three years there's obviously going to be omissions on here so but all in all i actually think it's a pretty i'm surprised about how good that list was um honestly what i think probably should make it in even though it doesn't sound very you know hardcore to gamers but uh we sports that was huge. it was pretty revolutionary that's and true it was well done like it was i mean the we as a system game. like i guess they would have to put it in as a system the we would have to go in as a system because i think the big thing about we sports was it made and the we in general it made it so accessible to everybody mm -hmm. everybody wanted to play that remember our whole family would get together and play bowling yeah you know, people parents that didn't care about playing they're like hey let's go play play the bowling game right that Mm -hmm. That was a joke. People, you know, people talk about like, oh, it's not a real game. It's like, but you were still playing it because you wanted to play with your family. And you're like, because you're mm -hmm. still having a good time. Exactly, you're still having an amazing time. Motion controls to the masses. That was the real appeal that sold that system so much. Was really Wii Sports. Um, mm -hmm. They had other good games, but that game, that whole system sold on Wii Sports. I'm telling. Yeah, that was the must-buy game, and that was it. <laughs> of one of the highest selling systems of all time yeah so yeah there you go well hey that hit us up let us know do you think the list was good and what game would you add on to it that you think is uh been wrongfully omitted hit us up let us know comments down below of course at words my face on twitter and google Plus, facebook always good ways to get in a hold of us
that was a good show. We're back. All right. And we're going to do different stuff next time. We're probably not going to, you know, be regularly back. We're going to just split them things up. But uh, we have some ideas. So stay tuned to the channel and maybe we'll get our faces back on here one of these days. Maybe. maybe but maybe not. <laughs> but as always, I'm Brian. With me as always, producer extraordinaire, the tyrant to cool, Brendan. Yo. And we are out of here. Peace.